I work from a mirror, uh, sitting in front of the mirror and zoning out and forgetting that you're even painting yourself and just letting your hand respond to the things that your eyes see. I, I just, when you get to that point in painting, that's just, it's really rewarding. I guess I just want her to be an ongoing character, and I recognize that they're self-portraits, but I think I've, I've sort of disconnected from that so that she can have her little adventures. Um, I think the part that's more self-portraiture to me is that they're sort of narrative exaggerations of things I've experienced, and I, that might sound silly because obviously it's a version of me, but the, I think the narrative is the part that feels more like the self-portraiture. This has sort of been an evolving body of work. I'm not one of those artists that has one body of work and it's completely separate from the next body of work. It's just a kind of awkward evolution. It started really with a group of girls that were sedentary, kind of zombie-like, um, overly relaxed, like a cautionary tale of what could happen if we relax into our bad habits. And she sort of awoke from that state and became one ongoing figure, became kind of an ornery, grumpy pirate that woke up on the wrong side of the bed. She's just become more alert. She, she was always in a chair uh, for a while, sort of like Curious George goes to the circus, but I would not take her places. So as the pirate doesn't go to the circus, she doesn't go swimming, she doesn't go out for sushi. And she was just sort of stuck in this sedentary indoor environment. And I think I tried for years to get her out of that space. And I've found that she just does what she wants. And I don't, I don't really get a say in the matter. Um, and then I read St. Lucy's Home for Girls Raised by Wolves. I'd been living in Louisiana for four years. And really living in that southern environment Hadn't, it hadn't really made its way into my work. And reading her book, it had a lot of southern environment. I think she's from Florida. There were swamplands, there were animals, and all of a sudden that started seeping into my work. And next thing I knew, she was sort of out of her, out of her room and outdoors and starting to interact with animals and other creatures. And sometimes it takes other creative people to make your creative juices flow. I have an obsession with noses. <laughs> I really like them. I exaggerate the angles in her nose. It's not really my nose. Um, and I think I don't find that symmetry of the face as visually satisfying. I've tried doing some frontal images, and I just don't aesthetically find it satisfying. <laughs> There's just something about a rough, toothy canvas and how the feel of the paint grabbed by it from the brush. I just really like. I like the feel of it. I like the bounce of the canvas as the brush hits it. It's just a feeling. It just feels good. And I, I fell in love with the, the color of the paint, that sort of thick, frosting-like, saturated color. It just I think painters should want to eat their paintings. <laughs> we all find ourselves in kind of bumbling, awkward situations, and I just want them to have an empathy for that and to um, to be able to laugh at her and themselves in that and appreciate it for that reason. I think that's what they do for me. <laughs> I revel in my, in my bumbly awkwardness. I consider it a positive trait. I'm sort of a rule follower. I, I try not to be in my art, so I follow, I follow rules um, regardless of whether what I'm doing would break the the spirit of the rule, it's just a rule, so I'll follow it. And, and when I find myself thinking that, um, that something's not serious enough or that I sh surely I couldn't do that, I've, I've decided that means that I wholeheartedly have to do it, that, I, that my art is not a place where I want to make rules for myself. So I, I make, when I find myself making one, I try and break it purposefully. <laughs>